The Duchi F3 is a phone that in shape and size is a little bit similar to the Samsung Galaxy S6. And at first glance the F3 looks pretty normal, but as soon you get it in your hands, you feel the premium materials used and that this phone is something special. I'm Styler and this is my full review of the Duji F3 Wide from tinydeal.com. So the F3 is using a 5 inch IPS one glass solution HD display from LG. It has a 2.5D curved Gorilla glass, comes out of the box with Android 5.1. It has built in Samsung camera, full metal frame and is powered by the MTK6753 clocked at 1.3 GHz. And for the rest of the specifications, please check out the video description. So let's do a quick unboxing. So the phone comes in this black box with F3. We see Duji. We also see here a sticker, a barcode. And here on the side, we see also the Duji logo. And here you can scratch to see if it's original or not. On the back side, we see some specifications. 5 inch HD, 720p IPS OGS. Chipset is MTK6753, 64-bit octa-core, comes with Android 5.1 and the internal memory 2GB RAM, 16GB ROM and the camera is 13 megapixel main. We see interpolated to 16 and the front is 5 megapixel and this one is also interpolated to 8. So with the phone comes First of all, the micro USB cable in a very standard quality. We have the wall charger branded with Duji. We see a CE logo and we see this one here is a 5 volt 1 amp. So standard charger, but in a good quality. Then there's a small pin and even a small adapter for nano. So the phone is using a micro SIM, but uh, they include a small adapter if your SIM card is nano, so that's pretty nice. And uh, then we have a screen protector. So there will also be one on the phone from the beginning. And there is also a matte case included, plastic case. So with this one, you will protect the backside and also the corners. And last, there are some safety informations and a quick start guide in English with some pictures and informations. So that's it. And now to the phone design. On the top we find the light and proximity sensor, the ear speaker together with a 5 megapixel front camera that is interpolated to 8 the phone has a 5 inch HD display from LG. In the bottom we find the menu home and back buttons which doesn't light up. On the back side which is non-removable and made of glass we find a 30 megapixel Samsung rear camera together with a dual LED flash. Inside the phone we will also find a 2200mAh battery. And last we have the rear speaker which provides average sound quality. It is very loud but sounds a little bit too metallic for my taste. Also notice that it has a full metal frame that also makes the phone a bit heavy in the hand. In the bottom of the phone we find the micro USB port and the microphone. On the right side we find the volume rocker together with the power button and these feel very solid. In the top we just find the 3.5mm headphone jack and last on the left side we find the dual SIM tray which you have to open up with a small pin. And let's have a closer look at the dual SIM tray. Okay, so here we have the phone and the phone support double tap to wake. Let me show it here. And you can just uh, swipe your hand and it will unlock. So uh, the phone also support air gestures. Will work of course also in the gallery and the lounger. And let's also try out the off screen gestures. Let's try out a C for camera. Yep. So you see it activated. So that's really nice. And uh, here you see the stock UI and you see that the icons are a little bit different. These are typical for Duji. Let's try to scroll a little bit here in the UI so you can see that it's smooth and nice. 
Let's try in the app drawer. Okay, and let's see here in the top. Let's see the quick toggles. Let's turn the brightness a little bit down. And let's try to hold my finger. We have the overview of the desktops. We have wallpapers, widgets and settings. Let's go through the widgets. Okay, let's get back. And uh, as you notice, there is no kind of light in the touch buttons. These are capacitive touch buttons. They are just painted in silver. And the phone, unfortunately, also is missing a notification LED. So these are things you just have to deal with. And the phone has what they call 2.5D curved glass. So uh, here in the edge, it will be a little bit curved. So it gives this nice design and the feel when you touch the edge of the screen. And let's have a closer look on the connectivity. So you can see the Wi-Fi is okay. You can see it goes one bar down, but generally uh, the Wi-Fi is good and stable. We have the network and right now I'm just using 3G. So of course the phone also support 4G, but my SIM card here is only a 3G card. Overall stable and fast connectivity. While I tested the, the phone, I had no kind of connectivity issues. Let's have a look inside the camera app and let's see. Looks nice. So you can see the autofocus is working fine and fast. And let's click here. We have here HDR, panorama, multi-angle view, motion tracking and face beauty. And below here you can see it says photo, video and pro. We can also click on this small arrow and we have settings, face detector, color effects. Let's try here the settings, brightness, voice capture, auto scene detection, advanced settings. We see 16 megapixels in 4 to 3, 13 if you switch to full screen. You can set the volume keys to capture, smile shot, gesture shot, and so on. And let's try to slide to professional. So here you can change more settings. Let's try to go to video. And let's see, we have video quality up to full HD. So that's nice, we can see it here. We have color effects again. And let me show you some samples. Let me zoom in. See very good details and also good colors. Overall, a really nice camera actually. So I have taken some samples using the rear camera sensor in order to show you how the device performs. Take a look at these samples and be the judge yourself. The link to the samples can be found in the video description. And there are also some few information about the front facing camera. For pictures, uh, I would say the front facing camera is also very good. But for video, the video mode is really, really bad I would say. Only video with the rear camera looks really nice. With the front it's not good but uh, both cameras do excellent pictures. And next up let me try to do a picture here with the LED flash. Let's check it out. So this picture here was taken uh, in a totally dark room just with the LED flash on the rear. And you can see the quality is excellent and good. Very sharp picture. And here you can see the dual LED flash on the rear. And these are very strong. They are very bright. And let's also check out the viewing angles. So let's try here from the bottom side. You notice very, very good viewing angles. I 
IPS one glass solution. And here from the top, picture is always sharp and bright. And uh, let's check out the stock apps on the phone. So some of them I installed myself, some test apps like CPU X. The rest here just is stuck on the phone. And uh, one of the nice features is the voice assistant. Let me just activate this one. So we have voice wake up and you can also uh, open up a special app. Hi Tucci. Hi Tucci. Play Store. Play Store. Let's try it out. So for example, if I misplaced the phone somewhere, I would just say, Hi Tucci. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, so this is working great. And let's try out the second command. Play Store. Yep. So we see the Play Store activated. So this is really a nice feature, the voice assistant feature. But I must also say that um, actually sometimes I found out that the commands are activated by itself. When I, for example, saw TV or I was just talking with people, uh, suddenly it activated in my pocket. So um, sometimes uh, the commands can activate by mistake. And uh, if you don't say it correct, Sometimes it uh, will actually not work. I also found out that you have to be in the same location uh, and same uh, distance from the phone to say the words and uh, then it will work fine. But uh, if I, for example, would go 10 meters away from the phone now and try again, it would probably not work uh, because the sound or the volume would be different and my voice would maybe also be found different by the phone. So. It's not always working, but most of the time it does. It is not bulletproof, but still a very funny gimmick and nice feature. And uh, regarding uh, earphones, when using earphones with this phone, the sound is actually clear and loud, so uh, no issues with that. And now to a test call. Let's first test out the proximity sensor. This is working, fine. And now I will also put up the ear speaker to the microphone. The number you have dialed is not assigned. The gewählte number is not forgiven. The number you have dialed is not assigned. So that was the sound and volume from the ear speaker. So this one here is loud and fine. Another nice feature is that if you hold down the menu, you can see you can draw something here to take a screenshot. And then you can actually here save, cancel, reset, or share it. And now let's have a look inside the settings. So this is in a black style. So this is stock on the phone. We have SIM cards. And uh, if you're using dual SIM, you can choose uh, which SIM card you would use for the mobile data. You can use SIM 1 or 2. So you can just switch between the cards, but you cannot use both cards at the same time, of course, for data. When one is data, the other one will just be on 2G. And let's see in gesture motion. Turn to silence, answer to swing. System motion, three point screenshot. I believe this is like this, yeah. Two point adjust volume. So I can adjust the volume just by doing this. Double tap to lock on the home key. Let's see in the storage. One partition, total space 16 gigabyte, available 10.33 gigabyte. Support for SD card and USB on the go. Let's see the RAM consumption. 1.3 gigabyte is free of two. Here's cached. And we're down on about one gigabyte. We have Gesture unlock, double tap to wake, 
slide up to unlock or draw letters to open up different apps. Then we have visitor mode. You can hide your call log, SMS, uh, pictures and so on. Like a guest mode. We have accounts, language and input. So of course this is multi-language. Then we also find something here, smart feature. And this is actually the same as air gestures for the launcher, for the gallery, camera, music player and so on. Then we find developer options and about phone. We see the build number, we see Android version 5.1, model number and support for OTA, OTA, wireless updates. So that's it for the settings. And now to the live GPS test. You see that it has GLONASS support, normal satellites. We see the accuracy is down on six. So the accuracy is okay in use 12, in view 20. So this is a, a live GPS. I just went outside and recorded this so you could see the results. You see down on five in accuracy. And uh, you notice that the signal uh, are not the strongest, but it's okay still. In the rest of the video, I will show you some results from different test apps. And in the end, I will run a game and tell you about the pros and cons. So stay tuned if you want to know more.
So now to my pros and cons. First to the pros. It has a very nice glass and metal design and very solid build quality. It has relative thin bezels and that looks pretty good. It has good gaming performance and most 3D games run smooth. It has many funny software gimmicks like the voice assistant and it also has a lot of gestures and smart features, so that's very convenient. It features double tap to wake, but uh, it also has for example double tap home to lock, so that's really nice. It also has a very nice camera picture quality for both the front and rear. Pictures are sharp and detailed. And last, it also supports LTE Band 20, not something we see on all China phones today. So the cons are that there's no notification LED and no backlight in the touch buttons. The battery is not the best, it could be bigger, but uh, it's possible to get up to 7 hours on screen time, which is actually not that bad. It is also extremely heavy in the hand and not everyone really like a phone that heavy. The backside is non-removable, so uh, you can also not change the battery. It has very few built-in sensors and uh, unfortunately there is no compass or gyroscope. The sound quality from the built-in rear speaker is not the best, for my taste it's too metallic. And last, the camera lens on the back is pretty thick, so uh, on a table it does not lay totally flat, and uh, that's a little bit annoying. Well guys, that's it for the review, remember also to check out my blog, you'll find the link in the video description. If you have any questions, please comment below, Give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.